Uh, yes, ma'am, the program is live now. Shri Lakshmi, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. The program is live now, ma'am. Okay, can I start, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, good evening, uh, respected seniors, my dear uh, friends. Today's uh, journal club is acquired AVM after uterine curettage. Presenter is myself, Dr. Sri Lakshmi. From Journal of Case Reports and Images in Obstetrics and Gynecology, Volume 7, 2021. Authors are Poonam Kashyap, Ashok Kumar, Latika Sahu, and Chetan. Coming to introduction, I would like to the uh, article through case presentation. Mrs. X, gravidar to paraman living one of uh, 32 weeks, 32 years, presented to the emergency with the uh, Incomplete abortion and torrential bleeding. She was shifted immediately for suction evacuation, post which there was no reduction in the bleeding. In second case is Mrs. A. Gravida 3 abortion 2 with previous two first trimester abortion presented with Mr. Abortion, post DNC presented with repeated and chronic on and off bleeding daily. So, what could be the differential diagnosis? Before telling the differential diagnosis, I would uh, Tell you, like to tell you a, I would like to tell you a quote. I am rare and there is value in all rarity. Therefore, I am valuable. I am telling you this quote because uh, uh, this is a rare thing. AVM is a rare thing. But it cost a patient's life. It's a life-threatening condition. And hence, I would like to tell you that we should not forget these rare things while diagnosing a disease. Coming to background, uterine arteriovenous malformations are rare but life-threatening condition. It's abnormal connection between arteries and veins, congenital or acquired. Differential diagnosis this is a picture depicting arterial formation, malformation, say uh, showing arterial feeders and draining vein. This is a healthy blood, blood vessel. Uh, with artery and vein and arteriovenous malformation you can see the fistula formation or uh, abnormal connection between the vein and artery in the introduction it was first described by dubrail and lobert in 1926 definition is avians are nothing but abnormal communication or connection between arteries and veins either from birth or developed after trauma Arteriovenous malformation are suspected when the patient presents with heavy vaginal bleeding after pregnancy, especially when there is history of trauma to uterus, either in the form of surgery or instrumentation. Age of presentation from menarche to menopause, any time, usually 18, 18 to 72 years, but rarely in an aliparous woman. It's a picture depicting arteriovenous malformation. The true incidence of this rare condition is not known, but more than 100 cases have been noted in the literature till now. AVM is a rare entity, maybe due to underreporting. Clinical features, it typically presents with intermittent heavy vaginal bleeding for weeks or months. The suspicion becomes strong when bleeding occurs after pregnancy and there is history of trauma, either in the form of uh, curettage or previous uterine surgery. Diagnosis is made with uh, transvaginal scan with Doppler study, CT angiography, MR angiography, and hysteroscopy. Uh, transvaginal scan with Doppler study has been considered as the best screening test and MR angiography to be the gold standard test. And coming to treatment, depending on the clinical profile of the bleeding profile, uh, profusely, heavily, or uh, depending upon the hemodynamic stability of the patient, patient has been treated either medically or surgically. Medically, patient has been managed with resistant methargin, tanazole, carboprost, combined oral pills, surgically, hysterectomy, surgical hysteroscopy with resection, uterine artery, embolization, which is considered as the primary therapeutic treatment, laparoscopic, bilateral uterine artery lesion. Coming to 
Coming to case number one, a 32 year old lady, multipara, presented with complaints of intermittent heavy vaginal bleeding for five months. She had two deliveries by cesarean section and dilatation curettage done twice in view of retained products. The patient had menorrhea for six months of six weeks and pregnancy was confirmed by her UPT, which was positive. She had taken medical abortion for aborting the pregnancy. After 15 days, she got ultrasound done for as a check scan and she had undergone dilatation and curettage twice in view of RPOC. Irregular vaginal bleeding continued even after the procedure. She was referred to higher center with a suspicion of arteriovenous malformation on Doppler imaging. Patient presented with intermittent heavy vaginal bleeding. On clinical examination, her vitals were stable. She was severely anemic. On parabdomen, para there was no lump palpable. On per speculum, bleeding was seen through OS. As per vaginal examination, cervix pointed posteriorly with OS closed. Uterus was enlarged to six weeks size, firm and regular. Her investigation showed to be hemoglobin 6%, 6 grams, and beta HCG was in normal range. This is a transvaginal ultrasonography picture showing heterogeneous mass in anterior myometrium in lower body of uterus with endometrial thickness, 6 mm. In the Doppler imaging showing multiple high velocity, low impedance vessels seen in myometrium forming a mosaic appearance. This is a MR imaging showing mass in size of 5.5 to 3.5 to 2.5 with focal heterogeneous intensity and multiple flow related signal voids. On CT angiography, the hypervascularity of the mass was noted rising from both right as well as left uterine artery forming arteriovenous malformation. Later, the patient was treated with transcathedral, bilateral uterine artery, embolization with steel coils. After the procedure, patient was being followed by followed for uh, one year and she had regular menstrual cycles with normal flow. It's a pre-embolization as well as post-embolization image. In the second case, a 30-year-old lady with previous two vaginal deliveries and history of curettage for in Incomplete abortion was presented with irregular heavy vaginal bleeding for three months. There was history of curettage for incomplete abortion five months back. She was diagnosed with uterine avium with Doppler imaging and CT angiography of pelvis. The patient was treated with transcathetral uterinary embolization. She had restored normal menstrual function after the procedure and is doing fine in follow-up. Coming to discussion, uterine AVM are rare cause of vaginal and intraperitoneal hemorrhage. Uterine AVM was uh, identified in 21 out of 464 pelvic for uterine bleeding and found out the incidence was approximately 4 to 5 percent. There is proliferation of arterial and venous channels with fistula formation and mixture of capillary like vessels in arteriovenous malformation. Increased intraluminal pressure causes Secondary intermittent making distinction between the arteries and veins difficult. This con condition may be congenital or required. required. Congenital, in congenital, there is an abnormality in the embryological development of primitive vascular structures, which results in abnormal multiple communications between the arteries and veins resulting in congenital AVM. Congenital AVM has multiple vascular channels which invade the surrounding structures and prominent parametrial vessels on imaging which can be seen on imaging, while acquired cases are due to trauma, either due to uterine surgery, followed by curettage, instrumentation, endometrial carcinoma, cervical carcinoma, or GTD, gestational trophoplastic disease. It is proposed that during this trauma, venous sinuses become incorporated in scars within the after necrosis of the chorionic villi, leading to AV malformation. The treatment depends on the degree of the uterine bleeding and hemodynamic instability of the patient. AVM should always be suspected when the patient presents with intermittent heavy vaginal bleeding, especially post-abortion, post-dilatation evacuation, or post-instrumentation. The gold standard for the diagnosis is digital subtraction of pelvic sonography and pelvic angiography. The procedure not only serves to confirm the diagnosis, but also identifies the main feeding vessel in embolization. 
and is being considered as a main uh, gold standard treatment. Various treatment modalities are available from medical, surgical, depending on the clinical profile of the patient. So medical modalities, so as I told you earlier, GnRH agonist, estrogen resistance, methargin, dinazole, carboprost, and even hysterectomy has been done in heavy ma massive bleeding, which is not controlled with the medical management. In recent times, transcatheteral arterial embolization is good modality of treatment and should be the first choice of treatment in all women. Some people use denazole for a few weeks or months prior to going for embolization just to postpone the procedure. The additional advantage is that embolization can also be used in actively bleeding patient, that is uterine sparing treatment. After embolization, menstrual function and fertility is restored in majority of women. If there is failure of embolization therapy, there is no desire to preserve fertility or no possibility to follow up, then hysterectomy can be done as a last resort. In the first case, the patient had severe bleeding and severe anemia because of massive blood loss. There was delay in diagnosis as well and was wrongly treated with repeated curettage. And she was later treated with transcatheter arterial embolization after stabilizing her condition. She responded well and had no complaints in her follow-up. Strict follow-up was required in such cases. As such, there may be reactivation of these uh, vascular channels. If it happens, then immediate and appropriate measures should be taken. Taken. In the second history of uterine curettage done for complete abortion, she was uh, managed with transcatheter art uterine artery embolization. Conclusion, uterine AVM can often be missed as a presentation, may be similar to gestational trophoblastic disease, retained products of construction or PPH. This entity should always be suspected when the patient presents with intermittent heavy vaginal bleeding in the postpartum period or post-abortion, especially if there is a history of trauma, any surgery or instrumentation. Strong suspicion can lead to early diagnosis of this life-threatening condition and decrease the morbidity as well as mortality of a woman. This treatment, the treatment by transcatheteral simple and effective method that also reduces the morbidity associated with surgery and also preserves. Eyes can't see when the mind is blind. So I, what I try to tell is never keep your mind blind to common diagnosis. Keep uncommon things in a corner so that you can save the patient's life earlier and prevent all the complications. This is a pre-embolization uterine artery video showing arteriovenous malformation. This is a post embolization video. The hysteroscopy visualization of um, AVM in the uterine cavity. Picture A and B shows the visualization of AVM in the uterine cavity. C and D show. A, B, and D shows the visualization during hysteroscopic resection of large size vessels with massive bleeding. Image is taken during hysteroscopy. This is a vision of the uterine cavity after complete resection of the AVM. References. Thank you. Uh, Sri Lakshmi, a very wonderful presentation. Anything that's well Thank begun you. is very good. Both your quotes in the beginning and at the end are eye openers for us. And I really like Thank both you. the quotes. And uh, you presenting this along with cases is more attractive, I think. And it's a very form, well-formed presentation of this article. 
thank you very much any Actually, discussion or question across this case last year ma'am avi ma'am oh. it was not yeah. actually i would like to share an experience here. avi ma'am yes ma'am please uh, what yes, happened is i had this one patient who conceived on ivf and then uh, she had a miscarriage so she didn't travel back from dharmapuri to us so she said she'll get it uh, sorted out there in local so then she underwent a dnc and then after that she came with intermittent uh, bleeding and everything so when she came back again we thought okay there's some retained products and things like that so we did an ultrasound and that's when we realized that she has got an av malformation so then after this uterine artery embolization and after a break of 6 months or 8 months we did an embryo transfer and now she has uh, delivered and the kids are almost 3 years i think now they've got one girl and one boy that was one experience and the other experience that i had with an av malformation was uh, a patient who has taken tablet uh, for miss uh, for an abortion and then she's been uh, <clears throat> curettage was done in a local clinic on an opd basis i think and then she came back again with heavy bleeding and intermittent we also thought that time it was retained products so we did a, we also did a curettage and then again she came back after 10 15 days with heavy profuse bleeding and that's when we realized again that she had uh, um, av malformation so in this two things that we learned in these cases is one keep your eyes open for an av malformation two whenever we do dnc or curettage or something we need to be very very vigilant and we need to be very careful so that we don't traumatize the endometrium and induce these new vascularization so iatrogenic because there's only an iatrogenic cause so i think uh, that's one thing that all of us have to keep in mind so i would like other people to even talk or have a discussion on this case hello good evening ma'am can i tell a case ma'am Yes, yes, Purnima. Uh, ma'am, ma'am, actually, we are also encountered many cases, ma'am. Recently, other than uterine artery embolization, we have uh, uh, done another uh, treatment, ma'am, which I want to share. Uh, almost yeah, yeah. five cases we have treated. Uh, hmm. Other than uterine artery embolization, now newer methods is like using letros, ma'am. Letros, yeah, two point five mg we can give for ten days, along with a lupride dep, GnRH uh, agonist dep, we can give. And after and uh, tenexamic acidosis and the symptomatic treatment we can give for bleeding. After three weeks we can rescan and see, ma'am. Majority the AV malformation is shrinking, ma'am, nicely. And if if at all needed we can go for second uh, course, ma'am. Same letros, two point five mg for ten days and again one dep. Then after three months we can give withdrawal bleeding. Many cases they have resolved, ma'am. Without uh, surgery they have got resolved, ma'am. Yes, yes. um this newer method we can uh, use um, it on op basis also ma'am yeah Hello? but i felt you know the medical management is more apt in women who are not planning pregnancy ah okay ma'am okay ma'am no. yes also ma it can be used also only in hemodynamically stable patients ma'am correct correct medical no, management of the family is complete so ma'am are the family complete ah, agi there i think it's more apt Go ahead, ma'am. Ma'am, because now cavity endometrium all have to develop again, ma'am. I mean, yeah, yeah. endometrium has formed well after uh, after medical management also. Uh, they can conceive. Endometrium is form, uh, three line appearance and all. It's coming back normally only, ma'am. So oh, this yeah. can be tried. Even though patient has got bleeding heavily, we can give tranexamic acid, ethan salate, and all for symptomatic and start on letros. Usually in one week time, the bleeding is uh, getting reduced a lot, ma'am. Yeah. Hello. Um, thank you, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Hello. I'm, I'm Vinuta here. Vinuta. Hi, ma'am. Hi. <laughs> nice presentation, Mr. Lakshmi. Wonderful. Can hear me? Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, yeah. I have similarly. I have. I mean, I also have uh, encountered one case. Right? It was eight weeks of pregnancy. Uh. Mm -hmm. I did MR syringing for the patient, and uh, what happened is initially all the products came, and I thought okay it was uh, almost curettage also was done, but suddenly she we had a torrential bleeding like MR syringe that the syringe got filled up twice thrice without products, then I saw I suspected something wrong and I and I stopped it and patient became little anemic, 
and uh, hello yeah yeah ma'am please continue you can yeah yeah patient became anemic and then uh, okay i packed up the veg and everything and i thought uh, something must be wrong and i sent her to st john's it was uh, almost 15 years back where this uh, av malformation was not well uh, uh, topic so then later on they had done hysterectomy i mean uh, they did a hysteroscopy and found that there was av malformation transfused blood and then i just followed up then they did, actually they did hysterectomy but she was uh, like uh, she she was nally paras actually that was one case which i can't uh, forget it was done 15 years back so it's very nice that so many treatments have come now and um, that's it <laughs> lakshmi do you have anything to say lakshmi uh reka good evening Hi. everybody Uh, sorry, I couldn't join in the beginning, but there's just just one comment I need to say regarding what we call as AVMs. Uh, before we finally come to a diagnosis of a uterine AVM, the one point is after your routine cure touch, generally there tends to be some degree of endometrial uh, hypervascularity. It is called enhanced myometrial vascularity. It will settle by itself. after 2 or 3 weeks so uh, a spontaneous uh, if in the patient is asymptomatic or she has only very mild spotting when you see a nice color floor in the endometrium you shouldn't jump to the diagnosis of an avm just give time to settle it will settle by itself there's a lot of papers now coming on what is called as enhanced endometrial vascularity after a curettage or after an mt pill because how do you diagnose avms the minute you see so much of vascularity on uh, uh, myometrial endometrial vascularity you tend to say it is an avm but it's just a simple uh, persistence of a villi in a retained product so the over diagnosis of am just ba based on ultrasound should be avoided that's one thing what i just wanted to uh, highlight okay nothing related to the presentation or the management um like i basically in the recent times once we know that an entity called avms exist there is a lot of over diagnosis of avm and quickly you go for uterine artery embolization and other things if you uh, give nature the time it will settle by itself that's one thing what i would like to highlight a very valid point lakshmi uh, yeah sujata yeah as lakshmi told we have to really wait wait and see yes yes it is uh, it's really, really we have to wait and see because uh, uh, yes, i was the diagnosis but because now yeah. for every small uh, increased vascularity yeah. like yeah. everyone are jumping to the diagnosis they're getting panic <laughs> panic that correct correct. <laughs> correct the panic is oh. too much yeah <laughs> lakshmi ma'am uh, and someone is asking how to differentiate it from avm see generally um, basically they say what happens uh, yeah yes go ahead if you want to say i thought i think it's very difficult to find out by ultrasound yes huh? actually basically uh, the picture in ultrasound is if you have a lesion completely in the endometrium picking up vascularity it tends to be a retained product only Oh, if okay. you have more of myometrial involvement and mm -hmm. less of endometrial involvement that mm -hmm. can be chances of avm avm okay okay more of myometrial the myometrium will be will have lots of cystic spaces not the endometrium okay mm -hmm. that tends to be avm but even mm -hmm. that criteria is now revised recently that myometrial okay. vascularity also they call it as emv enhanced myometrial vascularity so they say give enough time for it to settle by itself it's right. two weeks two weeks just leave her alone they are not asking you to do a cure it just leave Even her alone in cases of adenomyosis no you get misled uh, we have mm, the yeah. cystic spaces increased vascular vascularity when you go for the yeah, yeah. pre existing so, that's pre existing adenomyosis that's yeah. what you're trying to say rekha ha ah, but what yeah, sometimes ah, yeah, when you do it post curettage no. and then see it for the first time when the patient is not with you and then you see uh, these adenomyotic vascularity there then also mm -hmm. you get misguided yeah. saying you but but uh, reka this vascularity will be glowing the adenomyosis vascularity will be will be there i i agree completely agree with you there will be increased vascularity but this one is an av flow bright and the first ah that villi is there no 
that yeah. mosaic pattern you will see just if you put color no you will have that uh, mosaic pattern that is very very classic of a persistent villain but that usually now others, mm, that, in adenomyosis that, uh, there won't be this torrential bleeding ah that that that, uh, that that's one more clinically it won't be there correct that uh, that will be there in adenomyotic uterus if you have done the curettage and she is pouring She's that is what yeah, misguided yeah. is what I was yeah, yeah, By yeah, ultrasound, yeah. you might mistake it because uh, the myometrin will have more of vascularity. That's yeah, one thing. Yeah. Second thing is, uh, by uh, on ultrasound only, who gives you the diagnosis of an AVM? Only imaging people, right? right. Imaging Correct. people, when they see that color flow and that mosaicity, okay. no, they'll jump to a diagnosis saying it can be AVM. The yeah. minute we write AVM, yeah. it will... It will uh, hit the panic button for you. Because we have no choice. Correct, <laughs> Once correct, the patient correct. starts bleeding, no, we will yes, just blame yes, the yes. AV. AV no, it's you. See, I'm not speaking about cases of mm -hmm. torrential bleeding. That, I'm not at all speaking about that. The cases where you do a curate and ask for a repeat check, no, invariably yeah. after two weeks or three weeks, there will be some vascularity and unnecessarily we'll get panic uh, behind it. Correct, correct. Hi, Sujata. Hi, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I could not join in the beginning because I was held up with the case. <laughs> they, yeah. Your discussions were about AV malformation were really informative. But in a doubt, ma'am. What are other what other investigations and the anemia part number like how do we otherwise if the patient is not bleeding, how often do we call them for follow-up? If we do do a post abortal scan and we say it's AV malformation. How do we follow up such patients without any other <laughs> clinical findings, cl clinical presentation? I think we should uh, call them up to see any collections in the uterus. Do another scan after two or two or three days. See, okay. Basically, uh, if the if, he, if he's hemodynamically stable and no. we are going to do a conservative management, uh, three no. days once follow up will be there initially. No. Other, after that, you can uh, increase it to weekly ones. If you are doing a medical management using letrozole and uh, uh, GNRH depot, GNRH. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if if you are uh, planning to uh, have an MR uh, intervention, then you have to conclude with an MR angio, and then okay. identify the vessel uh, invaginating vessels, and then only plan the treatment. So okay, okay. If the patient is having torrential bleeding, not stopping with the regular management, then uh -huh. you have to go with MRI and intervention yeah. only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, so that and mm -hmm. if, if you see patient is coming every second day she's having uh -huh. uh, bouts of bleeding and sometimes uh -huh. more so whenever she mobilizes herself then i think uh -huh. you should see how maybe she'll require blood transfusion uh -huh. and all that other things about correction of blood loss and anemia yeah okay. basically the presentation how they how they come yeah us. yeah yeah if she's yes. hemodynamically stable no major complications minimal bleeding if it is a mm. small neovascularization, we need not worry. If the imagination... Yeah. Any role the about now, nowadays, Irina? Because, because we have the... Uh, now we are doing repeat ultrasound for all uh, post bottle patients. I think the pickup rate is also high. Correct. Like Madam said, no, we are all jumping into conclusions. Mm -hmm. We have, we are forced to know, ma'am. Even for yeah, all yeah, second yeah. trimester abortions, we are supposed to keep a check scan report. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so what our, even our government uh, uh, are also asking for it. Kaila is a baby reported to practice panna sol ranga. Amma, amma. Amma, ma'am, second time Mr. Abhashan's la, number records la verify panni it ponanga. Pona varam. Bharati, ma'am, na varam mudhu, dengi repeat ultrasound vachiru ningla. Did you do the ultrasound? So that they are insisting, ma'am. She checked all my records for second trimester abortions and she just mm -hmm. asked me, why I want to see the repeat scan reports. Oh my God. That's ah, so the patient doesn't have more to do. follow up, no? How they many patients want... come back? Yeah. No, ma'am, they before they discharge, before they get discharged. Oh, before they're discharged. Okay, that's okay. We can do it. <laughs> it's safe for us also. <laughs> Yes, it's safe for us also. That's true. Yeah, that's very important, I feel, because it's such an invisible procedure what we are doing, MTPs and all this. Ah. Definitely, we <laughs> should do. However good we have done, still we feel that something is missing there. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Um, what, yeah. Whatever good. Have and I think we hello. only keep us up. Hello, we are scared to all do it for the... Keep us updated as well. So what we have to do... Uh, underdo, overdoing, overdoing. <laughs> <laughs> 
ஓவர் டூ பண்ணிட்டு அஷர்மென்ஸ் எத்தனை பேஷன் அஷர்மென்ட்ல வந்திருக்காங்க நம்ம ஓவர் ஸ்மார்ட்டாவும் இருக்க முடியல அண்டர் ஸ்மார்ட்டாவும் இருக்க முடியல Mm. The other thing is we can add an ultrasound guided time, MTP. Yes, yeah, that is nice. I think most of us are resorting to that only, Suja. That one, ultrasound guided only, yeah. Ultrasound that's good. I, I, I've just, I've asked for a second, I've endorsed another machine to, for my labor room. And the mm-hmm. JD has given permission saying that, okay, you can have it for, for monitoring labor patients and for uh, MTP. Okay, MTPs, yeah. Mm. So mobile nice. unit. Because we can't uh, shift the uh, scanning also, no? from one place to another place <laughs> yes ma'am yes ma'am that is also there no there some rules as there we can't shift from our room this this jd is benevolent as sujatha ma this jd is benevolent as sujatha ma'am theri le theri le ma'am i don't know i don't know because my my machine is for uh, renewal and i've applied there is no reply from the other end i believe so he's with, with the collector ma'am he is visited doctor uh, uh, kavita Mad- madhus mm. hospital Oh. there was a paper cutting no ma'am one mm. month back therilla ma amma ma'am they have visited dr kavita madhus hospital for mm. uh, for ps and for uh, ultrasound they have visited and they have given a report in the tamil local tamil paper ayyo ena madri idu avanga visit pannirukanga avanga center visit panni oh and the madri nothing okay. nothing okay. Uh, spotting out any mistakes it's just that they oh. have visited and uh, uh-huh. along with the collector uh-huh. ma'am doctor madam sarayu madam um avanga jd oda poi irukanga oh okay randomly they are going to some hospitals right? yes ma'am uh-huh. can't understand what is happening kal utite yes ma'am very scary really <laughs> service pananuma vendama nu theriyala namakku ipo ukkandu yes ma'am really <laughs> Sometimes I feel at this, age, at this age, is it necessary for yeah, us I'll to just, get trapped by these people? <laughs> I'll just send it in the group. I'll send it in the group. I'll send it in the hospital. Oh, okay, okay. Ma'am, they have been visiting, ma'am. My hospital last week, Dr. Bharati came. Oh, okay. In charge okay, of family week. welfare, they visited all our... Uh, all my mm-hmm. secondary minister abortions were audited. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, okay. I only heard of one recent sting operation <laughs> to identify some quacks practicing in Tirpatu. Mm, mm. But anyway, I think this is something we should not discuss on this forum. Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So an ultrasound report for second yeah. trimester is important. This is what I wanted to give, ma'am. Right. Shri, anything else? Yeah. Girls? Poonam... பூர்ணிமா மாதவி தென்றல் எனி சஜஷன்ஸ் மெடிக்கல் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் ஒர்க்ஸ் இயர் மேம் லைக் ஜிஎன்ஆர் எச் அகோனிஸ்ட் ஆல் தோஸ் திங்ஸ் ஹவு எஸ் பூர்ணிமா கிவ் நோ யுவர் இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் ஜிஎன்ஆர் எச் மேம் ஆல் தே காஸ் ஹைப்போ எஸ்ட்ரோஜெனிசம் அண்ட் வாஸ்குலாரிட்டி கம்ஸ் டவுன் மேம் டிங்கிங் she is uh, breaking by creating hypoestrogenism that um, uh, uh, proliferation de- mean the vascularity decreases ma'am and then when vascularity Genesis decreases as well as endothelium has been reduces mm-hmm. this is the same action for letrozole also ma'am letrozole also causes hypoestrogenism yes, to some extent same, same ma'am same all are hypoestrogenic uh, mm-hmm. state it creates a hypoestrogenic state so try with merina After yes, six ma'am, ma'am, that is only for the stop. Mirina is only progesterone now, ma'am. Only progesterone. That's right. Yeah. Only progesterone. Maybe, maybe it is. But in the presentation, ma'am, I don't want to... Maybe it is. In the presentation, ma'am, in the presentation, ma'am, I don't want to... Maybe it is. 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 Ma
Mm-hmm. So, actually uh, estrogen any... causes neovascularization that is why we are using an anti estrogenic drug here and this um, uh, gnrh depo causes pituitary hypothalamus suppression it causes dual suppression along mm-hmm. with the ovarian suppression so that whole cycle is suppressed, mm-hmm. suppressed. and that is why they go into longer periods of amenorrhea okay mm-hmm. because yeah. of this longer duration of amenorrhea neovascularization is uh, uh, temporarily stopped mm-hmm. and that is what causes uh the vessels to regress yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, and the, this like medical management something like the endometriosis, endometriosis huh? and also any yeah. surgical procedure we can see? postpone for the time being yes ma'am uh, ma'am this medical management can be uh, used even to postpone the embolization procedure or if you are planning you can wait to watch with this correct, correct. management If you give the mm-hmm. long-acting depo, three months you will have amenorrhea, no? So you mm-hmm. can get yes, enough time for the patient to be uh, revived and uh, you know prepared mm-hmm. and mentally be not prepared. Not anxious from our side. I don't know if the patient is anxious Otherwise, or not. They will we do a lot of research anxious. in Google and eat our head also, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> counseling and consent becomes an important part over there. You know, counseling and uh, proper information and consent, I think, is very very important. Current scenario. <laughs> every patient madam every patient every patient has to see yeah like somebody was telling in one of the webinars no uh, mm-hmm. consider every patient walking into your op- opd as a litigant patient <laughs> so whatever you are going <laughs> to do, get consent in- even for opd treatment anta uh, including our sisters mc patel sir <laughs> mc patel sir was saying that <laughs> yeah that's right. saving her skin has become and her attender <laughs> as a litigant anta mm-hmm. Well, we'll never know who uh, who has any background or something like that. When whenever we see a patient, we can never guess that. You cannot assess by their outlook. <laughs> don't don't judge a book on the thing. By its cover. Like, exactly like that. Yeah. <laughs> we can't. Some real things. Some patient would have come so like a thing, but now, uh, by God, <laughs> the amount. Once I had a uh, bad case, like ectopic I had. In midnight oh. suddenly they came pulse la bp la full hypotension uh, severely anemic i didn't want to take that case in the midnight but that fellow he literally fell at my feet and said please save my daughter my daughter and the krishnanand i can't guarantee the life I'll, that was like i not recently i can't guarantee the life of that girl like i know it's very difficult it's okay even if she dies please save save oh god and then at that midnight i sent him to bring some four five bottles of blood this was a very risky he went to nh and got some four bottles of blood because it was not there then okay we this is somehow managed resuscitated and uh, morning she was okay i did act i mean we were able to save the patient uh morning pathing in a how many attenders and he looked like a beggar for me to be frank morning so many politicians are coming coming non stop to see the patient i was like what if this patient died, died what i should have died next day <laughs> so we can't predict anything that's what i came to know after seeing that patient <laughs> yeah yeah all Nobody the politicians coming and asking question. me yeah it was unbelievable he looks it, it looks like a tribal actually when he came in the night nan okay i took him for granted okay let me do it and the, the thank god the patient was already in the morning then next day each politician is coming to me and asking how is the patient who uh, everybody is coming like i was like so shocked oh he'll be god, a big influencer in the village madam ada helte yaar no enu anticipate madakagala take for granted and thalake agala patient is coming mohan has got, uh, mohan priya has got a question in the chat box why don't you see that shri hello Shri, ah uh, yes, ma'am. Ah uh, yeah, ma'am. Ah, doc- yeah, yeah. Six months to one year, ma'am. After six months. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Actually, even it has uh, its own disadvantages. Uterine artery embolization can cause uh, premature ovarian failure. Uh, and pregnancy complications like placenta previa plumor incidence of this uh, cesarean sections even it ha- even it has its own disadvantages compared to hysteroscopy and other medical management treatment also but i don't know okay, how okay. Uh, usually they tell you try an artery embolization is the best uh, need to do lot of research actually okay 
so for this kind of patients we prefer medical uh, line of management ma'am or depends on the patient's uh, yes. symptoms or uh, condition until unless no, the patient is not hemodynamically if it is if she is hemodynamically stable okay, okay. if she is uh, literally not able to manage massive vaginal bleeding unstable hemodynamically unstable better to go for uterine artery embolization okay ma'am thank you ma embolization procedure is not available so easily in all cities so initially in also only dr pratik uh, performs in the hospital yeah yeah dr pratik is quite good uh, doing all cases of uae yeah. in hosur yeah he's, he's doing nicely he's doing a lot of cases like that yeah dr pratik I have sent Any other question? Hello. Any other questions? Mm. Purnima, give the concluding remarks, Purnima. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Thank you, Sri Lakshmi, for enlightening us you, with the uh, information. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, <laughs> and uh, it was a very good discussion going on on the topic uh, it's very nice to see we are uh, meeting uh, every month without fail and discussing our cases which was not happening before so we would like to continue this month and month so that we can gain knowledge and share knowledge thank you shri lakshmi thank you rekha ma'am vinitha ma'am and everybody for attending uh, journal club uh, thank you thank, thank you ma'am 30th thank is you. our monthly meeting kindly tell everybody it's a tuesday yeah, afternoon ma'am. 30th tuesday afternoon okay uh, this ah, okay, time ma'am. it's being hosted by rainbow we're having okay, one ma'am. ob topic and one uh, nicu topic and uh, whoever wants to be one of the local presenters please come forward for the presentation or you want to have some cultural activity or any other kind of activity please prepare arrange for it and bring it. bring them forward any suggestions for the 